What separates phone cameras from more professional cameras? At this point, largely surface area, where DSLRs have much larger image sensors. Those sensors take up a lot more space, and as sensor size increases, so does lens size. We just don't have this much room on our phones. We have flirted with larger sensors, as many in our audience might remember the Lumia 1020 and its Oreo disc back. This phone sensor is roughly three times larger than the sensor in the iPhone 7, but compared to an entry-level DSLR, it's one-seventh the size. Those larger sensors allow proper cameras to use larger pixels and soak up more light to create more photographic images. DSLRs also benefit from the ability to swap lenses, customizing the camera for specific photo situations. So how can we get around these space limitations on our phones? The newest camera trend for 2016 is including multiple camera sensors, but not all systems are created equal. The three examples we'll focus on for this video are the iPhone 7 Plus, the Huawei Mate 9, and the LG V20. What are the differences? Which might be the best fit for you? Let's dig in. Two of the phones in our comparison utilize second sensors to change the field of view, simulating a zoom. This makes the V20 and the iPhone 7 Plus more flexible performers. Changing the focal length of the lenses on board means we can get closer or farther away from our subject without moving our feet. Apple's approach on the 7 Plus is to zoom in. The second sensor acts like a 2x hardware zoom, doubling the focal length of the standard sensor, which can then be cropped in further using software. Because it's not too dramatically different from the iPhone's standard sensor, these two cameras can be used in tandem for Apple's portrait mode, a setting which uses information from both cameras to create a soft blur to the background of your photo. LG went in the opposite direction, literally using the second sensors on the G5 and V20 to deliver an ultra-wide view. It's a dramatic look at the world which almost captures a panorama with one shutter press. It's so wide, however, that the two cameras can't really be used in tandem. LG has a mode to layer one photo on top of the other, but it's more of a collage than a true merging of both images. When you need to take a step back from your subject, though, or capture more of the scene in front of you, this is a bold solution. Both Apple and LG suffer in low-light conditions, though. The wide-angle and zoom lenses need extra space, so to compensate the secondary sensors on both phones, use smaller sensors and smaller apertures to incorporate smaller lenses, and this means with each exposure on the ultra-wide and the zoom cameras, you're capturing less light. But what if we could use the surface area on the second sensor to improve capturing light? Huawei's approach on the Honor 8, P9, and Mate 9 is quite different than what LG and Apple produced this year. Instead of using different sensors with different zoom lenses, Huawei's dual-camera phones use the same sensor size and the same focal length for both cameras. The main difference for Huawei, one camera captures color information while the other camera captures a black and white image for light and clarity. The exposure is primarily generated from the color sensor, then contrast and details from the monochrome sensor are applied to improve the final output. The results are unlike any other phone camera we've reviewed this year, improving the dynamic range of finished JPEGs and preserving content which might have been lost in clipped highlights. Huawei uses slightly smaller sensors and apertures than what we might find on a single camera phone like a Pixel or a Galaxy S7, but drawing data from both sensors for each shot largely makes up any deficit for low-light photography. Since both lenses are the same, the phone is also more accurate at sensing depth information. Where Apple's portrait mode can only be used in good light at a certain distance from your subject, Huawei's wide aperture mode can be used in any conditions at any distances, and users can adjust the amount of blur they want after the shot has been saved. If we don't want thicker phones or larger camera bulges, Huawei's solution is a novel approach for improving the core photography experience on a smartphone. And this trend is likely to continue into the future. All three manufacturers here have found success with their respective fan bases using this approach. Companies like HTC experimented with dual sensor and 3D cameras in the past. Rumors point to a Galaxy phone in 2017 trying something similar. And the future of augmented reality services will require multiple cameras as well. We hope this primer helped explain some of the differences and the pros and cons to each approach. So which system looks like it would be the right fit for you? Vote in our viewer poll by hitting the more info icon in the upper right corner of this video. As always, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to this channel for more comparisons like these and help us out with some sharing on your favorite social networks. For Pocket Now, I'm Juan Carlos Bagnell, author of Take Better Photos, Smartphone Photography for Noobs, and I will catch you all on the next video.